Hello, welcome to this, this section called uh, Initializing Data Systems with Products, BigQuery. So uh, Google has a number of database or data products and BigQuery fills their data warehouse category. And essentially data warehouses are super fast SQL based, um, meaning you write SQL to interact query them. Um, SQL based um, databases, they use a different way to store their data under the hood. I, I believe the term is called like, like a column, column, your, what a column store. Um, and I have no idea what that is, but they, they store their data in a different way that allows them to be more performant. Um, they're basically though optimized for analytical processing, sometimes called OLAT, online analytical processing. And the idea is the, this use case is more or less you load the data once and then you just run data queries against it to like reads um, uh, to, to find out something, right? As opposed to online transactional processing, OLTP, and that's more like the cloud SQL product, where in, in this case, with OLTP, the, the, the use case is you store some data, you read it, you update it, you read it again, right? You're constantly updating the data. And, and that's the main difference between, say, why you might use BigQuery versus why you might use something like Cloud SQL. Um, one thing about BigQuery is it's not, unlike Cloud SQL, it's, it's, it's a Google product. So you don't have to, like if you remember with Cloud SQL, it's really an open source solution, this Postgres example. And we had to do all these gyrations to, to, have, to connect a client tool to securely connect it to um, Postgres. We had to have all these different ways of connecting private IPs, public IPs, right? You don't have to worry about that with BigQuery because it's all going to, you're interacting with Google APIs the whole time. And as such, they're always secure and you don't have to like do all those connection methods. Um, there's basically three ways of, of interacting with it. One is through the console. You can actually run all your you know, queries and load your data all through the console. You could uh, also use a command line extension to cloud, G Cloud called BQ. And then thirdly, you can use the APIs directly. Okay, so um, the main idea here is general flow is you load your data up, you store it up there. Um, you know, and, and now you're talking about gigabytes of data, right? Not just small data sets and, or terabytes of data for that matter. And what you're going to do is you're going to load your data up and then you're, then over time you're going to have analysts, you know, running their queries, maybe cron jobs, things that happen in a cycle against that data, right? And, um, and so that's called big query jobs. And then the things that are storing your data is tables, ultimately, just like SQL, there's tables, but tables are grouped into what's called a data set, just kind of like a database, right? And so they're a bunch of co-located tables and they're stored in a project and in a location. And a location can be a region like US Central One, or they can be what's called a multi-region, which is, a, and there's only, I think there's only two right now. There's US or Europe, which is basically spread across multiple uh, regions within like a continent. So I think the easiest way of getting at this is going through a quick start. So I, um, and we'll just kind of see all these concepts in action. So let me go into my project. Here's my project. I type in BigQuery and I find BigQuery. So the first thing you'll see is here's my project. Oh, I'm in my project. And then this is the, this is the listing of the data sets in this project. And there are none. I haven't done anything with it yet. Um, but one thing you can do is look, was confusing me at first is I can actually be in my project training main, but then query things that are in other projects. And we'll look at pricing later and you can see how this makes sense because the price to store stuff is separate from the price of executing against it. Okay. So in this case, there's a public set of public data sets, which I need to copy the link to uh, this right here. Let me just do it and I'll explain what I'm doing. If you paste this in here, um, I'm still in my project, training main, but by pasting that in there, it actually added this BigQuery public data 
uh, to my, so that's, that's another project. And then these are all different data sets that are stored uh, in that project. So I'm not paying for the price of any of the storage of this. Now, if I run my queries against it, I'm paying for the operation of querying them. So um, let's go look down. The, the tutorial has us look at um, let's see. Oh, just before I forget, from a permission perspective, there's I haven't dove, I didn't dive into this, but I've seen this in my work. There's permissions to read the data, and there's separately permissions to like execute in a project, and they're so they're distinct. So, you know, just because you have access to data, you need to be in a project that you can actually run the compute to to access the or process the data, right? So there's separate permissions there. Uh, I, I'm not going to go into that because. You know, just a little bit too deep in this topic, but there is a um, this is a data set in this project called USA Names. If I open it, you can see its description about it. Right, um, main thing here is you can see it's located in in a region. In this case, no, it's located in a multi-region called US, which is the US multi-region. Okay, um, within USA Names, you can see that they have two different tables. If I click on a table, I can see its schema, which is basically the structure of the data that's in it, state, gender, right? You can see the type, right? Some description. You can some details about the table, which is not terribly interesting, new. You can preview the data. So here's an example of a row, right? State of Arkansas of females in 1910, there were six people named Elsie. Okay. Um, again, we're not so interested in the data itself, but just the fact that I uh, just understanding how this works. Okay, so then you can see that there are, um, in this table, there are a lot of data. Five, five million, five, I think five million records, right? So, um, you know, I mean, it's not crazy, crazy big. I think there's a size of the table size, right? So this table size is only 171 megabytes. Which is actually in the world of, of big data and, and and data warehouses, that's tiny actually. I mean, unless you're in the I mean, multiple gigabytes, you know, you're you're still small. Um, so yeah, anyway. I mean there's some question. If you have something in the data set that's that, that small, you know, it almost doesn't need to be in um, in this in BigQuery, because you know, you can store it in your normal transactional database fine too. Okay. Let's go run a query here to see how that operation looks. So um, here it is right here. So this is pretty much straight SQL. Uh, I'm less, I've not used backticks here before in queries, but I'm gonna have to look that up at some point. But um, this is basically straight up query. Um, and it's basically gonna give me out, I think, I don't even know. It's going to basically group everything by name and gender, and then it's to sum up, do a sum of all those records as it's doing its um, grouping. So I think it's going to tell me everybody who's named by that name of a type female. So like you know, and then they'll just sort it by uh, let's see, order by total. So it's going to be the biggest ones first. So let's just run the query and see what we get. So here we get query. Now, one thing here is you can see up here, you can see that they it's going to take 99 megabytes to run. So again, this is the processing, essentially the processing time measured in megabytes or, or in disk space you're using. So you can look at the details of the query here. See so the query results. So there's some information for the job, right? Um, I think. Yeah. I'm trying to see. Results. This is the data that came back. So James was the most popular name um, for males. And then execution details. Let's see if it tells us. Shuffled. I'm trying to see where it shows you the, the cost here in megabytes, but I don't see it here offhand. I'm sure it's here somewhere. I'm just not finding it quickly. But the idea is it actually took a certain amount of effort to do this. And maybe I'm just so shrunk they can't see it. But either way, 
Right now, you can see this is basically the price. So if you think about how much it cost you to run, that was 99 megabytes worth of, of something. And we'll talk about pricing in a bit. Okay, so this is how you can interact with um, BigQuery from the console. Uh, close, let me close this down. Um, instead, though, we can also use the command line tool. So let me switch gears. And I did this earlier, so let me. Um, for gcloud components list, so gcloud can install other tools, one of which is called the command line, big line, uh, command line tool, and I've already installed it. So you do gcloud components install and then the component. Now, I, when I was doing this, I realized that there's another tool that's, oh, this is a big table. Right. Okay. I was getting myself confused. We're not using Bigtable right now, so I don't have that installed. I just have BigQuery installed. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let's see. I think I have this queries written here. So we're going to basically do the same things, but just using uh, the command line tool. So the first command we can run is called BigQuery show, and then I list the project colon. This is the data set and then the table, and they'll basically tell you the schema about it, right? So that's the important thing to look at the table, right? Um, and then you can run your query. And then there's the same data that we saw earlier. Okay, so next, let's go back to the console. Another quick start. So. I, this is the second time I did this video, and I completely forgot to do the second half of this um, quick start. So that was just an example of querying data that was already there. This time we're going to go through an exercise of, of actually uploading data, um, and then you know then we can turn on. I'm not going to query it, but you could just query it just like you queried the other data, right? Um, and I'm going to pause the video for a second to catch my breath. Okay, I'm back. So what we're going to do is we're going to first download the data. So I'm going to do the whole thing fresh here, right? I um, don't think I need my command line tool anymore. So I put this on my desktop, and I can double click on it. Okay, so I've got my names. Uh, names has a bunch, uh, has a readme, and then it has a bunch of text files that have comma delimited data in them. I think it's something to do with baby names, I think. Okay, that's again less important for us to think about. Just know that some data it's common to limited, and we want to import it. Um, it has to see the structure of the data is name, it has female, and then a number. So there's three fields, two strings, and an integer. Okay, so the instructions basically says you want to go to. So yeah, so we're going to create a data set in our own project, which means we'll be paying for it, right? So you can't create it. And so if I want, by the way, if I want to get rid of this. Um, Big query public data because I can just unpin it and it goes away. It's not like the data is deleted. I just I don't have a link to it in this project anymore. Um, here, if I do this, I can create a data set, and um, the data set itself will be called baby names, right? Location I'm going to call US, right? That's the main thing about data sets. Those two fields, and I'm going to leave everything else alone. So now I have a data set. Clean up some of this. So baby names is here. It's a little hard to work on this sort of shrunken view. But so there's a data set. There's no tables in it, right? So if I go in the baby names, let me open it. Um, baby names, right? I believe you can create a table here. So you say create a table. I want to create a table from an upload. Um, I need to browse a file. I'm going to pick that first. 1880s. This has uh, the names from 1880. So I hit open, right? Um, file format, I'll let it, oh, no, I need to tell it, it's CSV, right? Comma separated variables. Um, I'm going to store it in this project under this data set. Table name um, is 1880. Okay, so that's 1880. And for schema, I guess you could do auto detect, but I'm going to not auto detect it. I want to paste it in, and I'm going to copy it from their example here. So I think they have it here. So this is the format here. It's basically, where is it? Where is it here? 
So it's basically, you specify it as the field name, colon, the format, comma, field name, colon, format, field name, colon, format, right? Or a type. Okay, so that's that. Um, we'll talk about partitioning in a bit. Um, and, right, so we'll talk about this business later. And I just create a table. So there's baby names. So if I clicked on this table, let's see what I see. I see there's the schema, details, and there's a preview of it. Right? Um, and then I can then go, if I wanted to, I can run queries. I'm not going to do it, um, but you can open a new query. And then you can run a query against your, your own project, baby names. And again, now you're paying for both the execution as well as the storage. Okay, um, I'm going to pause for a second to regroup. I'm just going to switch gears. Okay, we're back. Um, so there's, there's a couple topics we want to cover, um, and then we'll get to pricing. So um, the miscellaneous topics, we saw it a little bit when we created that table. There was something about partitioning. There was something about clustering. Um, I'm going to kind of just orally talk about it at a very high level. I don't want to, like, get too deep into any one topic like big query, um, big query here. But the, the idea here with um, big query is you have a lot of data, like you have terabytes of data. And they're usually grouped by, you know, there's they're maybe they're grouped by time, maybe they're every year there's a date, you know, there's, there's data coming in from each year. There's different ways you can usually divide up that data. And by dividing up your data, when you typically only running queries over a subset of that huge data set. Maybe, the, I guess the thing to keep in your mind is maybe imagine you're collecting data every month for sales or something, right? And you do it for like 30 years. So the idea is you run your queries though, you're usually running like, give me all the sales for this year or for this month, right? You're doing sort of a, a, a query over a subset of the entire data set. So instead of uh, this database having just, just one giant Imagine this one giant uh, blob of data, right? Um, that you have to run your query, you have to scan the entire set of data every time you want to get at something, right? Um, what you can do is you can break apart your data into chunks. In this case, we're talking about partitions first, which are basically, imagine different blobs of data. And this time you're splitting them, say, over a particular, particular column, say maybe the, uh, the year, right? And so that's what this is. You can break, you basically can pick a time unit column, which is either timestamp, date, or date time. And you can say partition on that. And then what happens is the data gets stored in these sort of buckets, blobs, and I've been using different terms. Um, in this case, partitions, right? And when you run your query that's uh, maybe over a smaller time range, it can just look at, uh, split the, you know, run it over just that section of data instead of the entire blob of data. Right? So the idea is, this is, and again, this is to basically deal with the fact that you're dealing with, you know, gigabytes and terabytes of data, um, maybe even pet, petabytes, I think, basically lots of data. And so by doing that, you can have a lot of data in your table, but when you run your queries, you're maybe running off of a smaller subset. So partitions either do it by a time unit column, ingestion time, when the data is uh, ingested, or you can have an integer field that makes sense to partition your data on. And again, these, part, these, these fields need to be fields that you're actually gonna be doing like limitations on, like, like you're gonna do a where clause and you're saying, give me all the dates between these two dates, right? So it's important that these are actual fields, in these two cases, fields that you will be doing queries on them. Now, there's another concept which seems to be overlapping a little bit called, part, um, called cluster tables. You can see this one's limited to time unit columns and integer ring columns or when you ingested things. Now, this is a little more flexible. You can actually um, do the same concept of basically breaking apart your data into cluster, you know, bunches, right, clusters. Uh, but this time you can actually pick one field or more field, one or more fields in an order. And when... And so then in this case, um, that's going to drive the sorting, by the way, of your data, right? But it also allows you to run queries that if you say, um, if you pick a certain field and that's part of your query, it's going to only query a portion, like a portion of this, the, the, a whole bunch of data. Like it's going to only hit a certain cluster, 
blobs. Okay, so either way, this is a little bit hand wavy, but this is common. It's kind of a common pattern when you're dealing with data warehouses. How do you kind of break apart your data into, into smaller chunks so that you can run more efficient queries? Okay, that's all I'm going to talk about. That um, don't want to get too much into it. Um, and the last, oh, there's a third way of doing this, which wasn't well documented, but I bumped to it in my work. Um, another way of sort of breaking apart your data is you actually can create different tables. Um, and by doing so, which is fun, I mean, okay, so that's not fancy, but, but what's fancy is you can actually run queries that run across multiple tables and gives you one set of results. And that's what's called, um, it's basically using a wildcard. So you basically use the star match. So you'll say like, you'll name all your tables, blah, 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 with maybe a date on the end, like maybe a, a you know, like 2021, 20, right? Or whatever, or 12, right, for the month. And you'd have one, one monthly data sets. And then you could run a query by saying the prefix, and then a star, and it'll run basically different queries against those different tables, right? And then it'll push all the, aggregate all the results together and then give you a single result. So that's another way of sort of partitioning or breaking apart your data um, by actually just storing different tables all together. And again, that'll be more performant because if you want to just do one day, you're only hitting one table. If you're hitting, you know, depending on how you put your star, you may be hitting a month's worth of data, maybe a day's worth of data, or maybe a year's worth of data. Okay. Um, so that's another way of sort of breaking apart your data and then run more efficient queries. And the last thing I want to talk about is pricing. And just real briefly, um, there's two parts of, of pricing, like I mentioned earlier. One is you're paying for the processing itself. The second part is you're paying for the storage. So um, storage, I don't think I have the actual price here, but storage, you're going to pay for, um, there's two, or two price points. Where there's a, the main price point, and if the data hasn't been touched for over 90 days, I think you pay half price going forward. So that's storage, pretty straightforward. Um, for the processing, there's actually two models. One is on demand, and that's basically you don't sign any contracts or anything. You're just saying, just I'm gonna do it. And you get like one terabyte free. So when we use 99 megabytes, we were eating into that one terabyte. Or, and then, then once you run out of your free allotment, you get uh, five, $5 per terabyte. So that sounds like, Terabyte sounds like a lot, but in practice, if you have a lot of data and you run a lot of queries, you'll, you'll easily hit this you know, limit pretty fast, okay? So if you think you're gonna do a lot of processing, you can actually do flat rate pricing, and you basically buy, it's basically like you're buying a commitment. You can buy monthly, annual, and I don't wanna get into the full details of it, but this is basically, if you're predicting that you're gonna run a lot of these, you'll probably get a better deal by going to flat rate pricing. That's usually true for anything with cloud. Um, that's pretty much, I guess there's a first gigabyte of storage is free also. So you get a certain amount of data. So my little data sets not going to cost me anything that I put up there. Okay, I think we're done with the BigQuery topic. Again, that was kind of, kind of a quick overview of it.